Hello, and welcome to this lesson on the vector field. Now, we've already talked about vector fields in a little bit in a previous lesson, but in this lesson, I just want to talk about them in a little bit more detail and do an example of how we can utilize a vector field to find vectors at given point coordinates. A vector field is defined as a function that returns a vector at a given point coordinate. So, we might have our vector field g, and it's going to be a function of some smaller vector. Remember, to return a vector, we have to start with a vector. And what we'll do is we'll evaluate that at some point with coordinates x, y, and z. So, let's do an example. Suppose that we have vector field s. It's a function of vector r. And it's going to be equal to 125 times x minus 1 times the unit vector a sub x plus y minus 2 times the unit vector a sub y plus z plus 1 times the unit vector a sub z. And that whole expression is over x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z plus 1 squared. So there's our whole vector field expression. Notice that it's got two major components here. It's got a vector inside it. That's our vector r. And everything around it is just our scalar. Let's call our scalar B. We could say that S is a function of R and is equal to B times R. Just like that. So now if we have this, the whole point is we want to evaluate it at a given point in space. So what we want to find is S of R evaluated at point 2, 4, and 3. All we're going to do is drop in the values for x, y, and z. Our vector field S is a function of R. We're evaluating at point 2, 4, 3. It's going to be equal to 125 times 2 minus 1 times the unit vector a sub x plus 4 minus 2 times the unit vector a sub y plus 3 plus 1 times the unit vector a sub z. And that's going to be over 2 minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared plus 3 plus 1 squared. Now all that's left to do is evaluate that algebraically. So let's just chunk it out. Here we go. 125 times just a sub x plus 2a sub y plus 4 a sub z over 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared. So next step we have 125 times, nothing on the top changes, a sub x plus 2, a sub y plus 4, a sub z. And that's 1 plus 4 plus 16. So that's going to give us 125 over 21 times a sub x plus 2 a sub y plus 4 a sub z and we use the distributive property gives us 125 over 21 times a sub x plus 125 times 2 over 21 times a sub y plus 125 times 4 over 21 times a sub z. So 
After all of that, we'll see that our vector s, function of vector r, evaluate at 2, 4, and 3, is equal to 5.95 base of x plus 11.90 a sub y plus 23.80 a sub z. Now, once we've got that, we can do some other sort of interesting analysis with that. Let's find the unit vector. Let's find a sub s at that point. And remember, that's going to be equal to s over magnitude of s. So the first thing we ought to find is the magnitude of s. And remember from the previous lesson, that's equal to s of x, the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared. And we've already got those values. That's our sx, that's our sy, that's our sz. So it's going to be equal to the square root of 5.95 squared plus 11.9 squared plus 23.8 squared. And that's equal to the square root of 35.4 plus 141.6 plus 566.44, which is equal to the square root of 743.44. So finally, we know that the magnitude of S is equal to 27. Point 27. It's a fun symmetry. So take that, bring it up here, and we'll see that our unit vector a sub s is equal to, remember, our vector s, so that 5.95 a sub x plus 11.9 a sub y plus 23.8 a sub z over. 27.27. So that just breaks out into 5.95 over 27.27 a sub x plus 11.90 over 27.27 a sub y plus 23.8 over 27.27 a sub z. So finally, our unit vector a sub s is equal to 0 0.22 a sub x plus 0 0.44 a sub y plus 0 0.87 a sub z. And there we have it. There's our unit vector for s at that point, 2, 4, 3. Now the last thing we might want to do is we might want to look at the vector field and find the surface where the magnitude of s is equal to 1. Right? This will become important later on in this course, being able to do that. Find the place in the vector field where the magnitude is equal to some value. So this might seem a little tricky at first, but right off the bat, it's not that hard. We know that, that the magnitude of s is just equal to the magnitude of that our vector field function that we originally had. Remember, we're not concerning ourselves with the point coordinates right now. We're looking at the field as a whole. So let's bring it back, x minus 1, a sub x plus y minus 2, a sub y plus not x plus z plus 1, a sub z all of that over x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z plus 1 squared. And that's the magnitude of all of that is equal to 1. So now we go and evaluate it. Now the magnitude operator here only applies to the vector component. It only applies to this. Remember, everything else is 
the scalar. Remember, if that's our r vector, then the magnitude of r is equal to the square root of rx squared plus ry squared plus rz squared. So for us, that's equal to the square root of x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z plus 1 squared. And we can rewrite our initial expression. Remember before we called all of this our scalar b. So we can come down here and say that the magnitude of s is equal to b times the magnitude of r. And again, in this case, it's equal to 1. So we've got all of that stuff again. We'll have b, which is 125 over x plus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared. Oops, it should be x minus 1. x minus 1 squared plus x minus 2 squared plus z plus 1 squared times the square root of x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z plus 1 squared. And all of that is equal to 1. Now you notice that this example is kind of set up nicely for us, right? That's the same expression that's down here. So that'll just translate into, so this is going to equal 125 over now the square root of x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z plus 1 squared equals 1. And now it's technically a surface, but let's get into a better form. That's going to be equal to 125 equals the square root of x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z plus 1 squared. And there we go. That's our surface equation at this point, or along this surface, the magnitude of s is equal to 1. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we looked at how to take a vector field and at a given point coordinate, find out what the vector is. Then we took that and found its unit vector by finding the magnitude and dividing the vector by the magnitude. And then we used the vector field to find a surface at which the magnitude of s was equal to one. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.